now we're at question two. Question two says, write as a single fraction 2x plus 3 plus x minus 4 over 4. So to do this, remember, all you have to do is write as one single fraction. To write as one single fraction, we find the LCM. The LCM between 3 and 4 is 12. 3 into 12 goes 4 times. This becomes 4 times 2x plus 3. 4 times 2 is 8x and then 4 times 3 is 12 so that becomes 8x plus 12 plus 4 into 12 goes 3 times and since 4 into 12 goes 3 times it becomes plus 3x minus 4 times 4 into 12, 3, or oh, 3 times negative 4 is minus 12. This is minus 12. So now all you have to do is add the numerators now. In order to add the numerators, we add like terms. So we add the 8x plus the 3x, that is 11x. And then we add 12 and minus 12. Adding 12 and minus 12, we we'll get 0. So it's 11x over 12. That's how we write it as one single fraction. Nice and easy, soft, a capital T. Now question B. Question B typically comes under um, converting from algebraic phrases to writing the mathematical statement. So write the following statement as an algebraic expression. The sum of a number and its multiplicative inverse is five times the number. So let's call the number A. Let's call the number A, all right? Let that number be A. Let the number be A. So if the number is A, it's multiplicative inverse. Now what is multiplicative inverse? Multiplicative inverse is known as A inverse. All right, the sum of a number and its multiplicative inverse. So the multiplicative inverse is A to the minus one. So the sum of a number A plus its multiplicative inverse. The multiplicative inverse is which number when you multiply it by A? Which number when you multiply it multiplicative inverse, you get the identity, which is one. So here it is, any number A multiplied by its multiplicative inverse, one over A, that gives you one. And so one over A is known as the multiplicative inverse of A. All right, so it says the sum of a number A and its multiplicative inverse, which is one over A, all right, they're saying, is five times the number. So it's equal to 5a. All right, so the sum of a number and its multiplicative inverse is five times that number. All right, so a plus one over a is 5a. Another way you can write that is say that a plus 5a raised to the minus one is equal to 5a. That's another way you can say it. Oh, wait, this five shouldn't be there. A plus A to the minus one equal five A. All right. So just to, just to talk about this, I haven't seen a lot of questions like these asks. We now ask with multiplicative inverse. Now, first thing I want to talk about is identity. Just for us to recall these things, I remember them. Identity, what is identity? The identity of any number is such that when you add a number to the original number, it remains the same. So for example, a plus zero equal a, who says zero, zero is additive identity or the identity of addition. Zero is identity of addition. 
All right, so this is something very important. And for example, multiplication now, A times some number one gives us the original number A. And so we'll say one is multiplicative identity. Or we'll say one is the identity of multiplication. All right, this is an important topic, very important. And then now after identity comes what is known as inverse. All right, after identity comes what is known as inverse. And the inverse of a number is such that, so for example, now we have some number A. When you add A, when you add A plus some number to give you the identity zero, so which number when we add it to A, we get zero? That's minus A, A plus minus A is zero. And so what we say is minus A is the, is the additive inverse. So minus A is addition inverse, and then one over A is the multiplicative inverse. All right, so these are some concepts that we should always know, nice and easy. All right, now part C says, factorize this completely. To factorize this, notice that you have the you have two perfect squares. You can write this as x squared minus 36 is six squared. And so now to factorize this, we can write it as x minus six using the difference of two square formula times x plus six. No little trick in this question soft, nice and easy, all right? Now let's go down. It tell us that we have to factorize two x squared plus five x minus 12. So the product of the x squared term and the constant, a times c, when we multiply them, what we're getting is negative 24. So what we're gonna ask ourselves is which two number one times them will get negative four. When we add them, we get positive five. So that looks like times them to get negative 24, add them, we get five. That looks like eight and negative three. So that's what we're gonna use to split the middle term as instead of writing five X, we're gonna write plus eight X minus three X. That's what we're gonna do, plus eight X minus three X minus 24. That's what we're gonna get. And then right here now, what we're gonna do is factor out two X, factoring out two X, what we get left back with is factoring out two X from two X squared, we get left back with X plus Factor now 2x from 8x, we get left back with 4. Nice and easy. Nice. Oh, this shouldn't be 24. This should be 12. That's crazy. Initial statement was minus 12. All right. So all we had to do was rewrite the 5x right here as 8x minus 3x. That's all we did. So now we factored out 2x from the first two terms to get 2x times x plus 4. Then we're going to factor out a negative 3. And we're going to left back with the x plus 4. Now once we do that, all we need to do now is factor out x plus 4. And so what we get left back with is x plus 4 times 2x minus 3. And that's how we factorize this question. Nice and easy, soft, a capital T. Doesn't look like too, too much. Let's fix that, that's 2x. Nice and easy. Now let's continue. This question is giving us the volume of a cylinder and it's telling us that the volume of a cylinder is pi r square h, make r the subject. So first thing it tells us that v is equal to pi 
times r square h. So in order to make r the subject, the first thing we need to do is divide both sides by pi h. Divide both sides by pi h. You're like, why would you do that? Dividing both sides by pi h is going to give us r square on one side because we're trying to have r alone on one side. So what this works out to be is we're saying that r square works out to be equal to v over pi h. Now, if we have r square, we need r. So how are we going to get r, r by itself? Once you have a square, you're just going to square root both sides. You're going to square root both sides. And by square rooting both sides, the square root of r squared give us r. And so r is equal to the square root of v over pi times h. And that is r. r is equal to v over pi times h. Nice and easy, soft, no issues there. Now part E, part E says, given that x squared plus ax plus b is equal to x plus two all squared minus three, work out the values of a and b. So as you would have learned later on in quadratics, you learned that this is known as the vertex form or the completed square form. So all you're gonna do is expand this side. You're gonna work out what is x plus two all squared minus three to determine what is A and what is B. So this is equal to X plus two R square, as we know it, this is really X plus two times X plus two. That's what X plus two R square means. Any number square, it means it's, it's just been multiplied by itself. X times X that give us X square. And then x times, or this should be plus two squared. X times positive two is positive two plus positive two. So we're getting two times x is two x plus two times x, which is two x plus two times two, which is positive four. And then we subtract three. Nice and easy, soft. So what this works out now to be is x squared and then 2x plus 2x is 4x. And then four minus three, which is just plus one. So x squared plus 4x plus one, all right? So x squared plus 4x plus one is equal to x squared plus ax plus b. So then you're gonna ask, what are we gonna find A and B? Now, if these two are equal, then the X square must equal to the X square. That makes sense. Then the AX must equal to the four X and the B must equal to the one. So what we're saying then, A must be four, clearly, A must be four and B must be one. B can be nothing else, B must be one. B has to be one, nice and easy. And that takes care of part E. So finish two questions. 